Welcome to the Popcorn Talk Network. For the online broadcast network that features movie discussion, news, and interviews, press one. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. From the Popcorn Talk Network, the online broadcast network for movie talk, and the schmoes know, this is Meet the Movie Press. Roundtable movie news and commentary from the industry's premier film journalists. Well, happy Friday, everyone. This is Meet the Movie Press, and I am Mark Riley, your host, editor-in-chief of Schmozeno.com, and I am so happy to be back. Thank you, Schmoville, for uh, sending me the well wishes while I was sick with Chili's food poisoning. Yes, it went on for a very, very long time. Uh, I don't want to get into the specifics of it because I almost died, but anyways, uh, I am so happy. As always, I have my co-host, Jeff Snyder from The Rap. You are not... Jeff Snyder. I was going to pretend to be Jeff for a little you're, while. You, you are, oh my God, everyone. I am very, JT, get that canned applause ready. I am very happy. One of my favorite websites, Editor-in-Chief is here representing Collider.com. We have Frosty from Collider or Stephen Weintraub. How are you, sir? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me on, sir. God, it's great to have you. And I mean, what better way to have, you know, Jeff is out. He's doing uh, some Thanksgiving uh, early it looks like so go ahead and uh, at the in Snyder on Twitter give him a shout out he's gonna call in in a little bit but what a better co I mean I can't think of a better co-host than to have you from Collider one of my favorite websites you guys know it on uh, schmoesno.com we're always sourcing Collider they are like up to the minute every day the breaking scoops are doing it all Frosty, welcome. This is Meet the Movie Press. How, how do you feel today? Uh, I'm doing very well. I know we've talked for a little bit about trying to uh, get me on, and the yeah. schedule has just never, ever worked out, but I'm, I'm super happy to be here. I'm super happy, too. I know. Uh, the fans really wanted you. We've, they've tagged you a bunch of times, I think. Uh, I've tagged you. Um, it, it, just, it was great to get that email where it's like, oh, you're coming on. That's perfect, because Jeff's gone, and uh, I needed a co-host. So there we go. And we're going to talk everything. I mean, this is Meet the Movie Press. You guys know it. We're on the front lines, as I call it. It's really dramatic. But the front lines of the news and the reviews and the commentary and the scoops and the exclusives, we do it all. We were just talking a little bit about, God, some of the stories that have broke that you broke this week. We'll get into that. Something that we've broke. We've talked Star Wars a little bit beforehand. We're, we're just talking everything, and, and we're going to get right into it. But, Frosty, I want to talk first. How did you get started at Collider? I mean, this is one of the best sites out there. And, uh, you know, g give me a little rundown. The, the, how did you how did you get involved with Collider? Uh, I started the site with a few people. You started uh, it. I did. Awesome. Uh, okay. In early 2005, we were working on it. Uh, uh, so a few people. Uh, summer of 2005, right before Comic-Con, we launched. Okay. And uh, it was pretty effed up for a number <laughs> of years while I learned... Uh, how the internet worked. Oh and, yeah, I'm learning it, that the hard way too. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a really truly a different world back then. Uh, yeah, I, it's amazing how it, how it just changes like almost every day. I, I tell people this and they don't believe me, but like uh, back when we started, um, I cold called the studios to get on their lists for screenings and like I didn't know who to contact. Like they had no interactive marketing department. Yeah, and I was just working the phones like, hey, would you know, can I get invited to the screening or cover this movie or what do I need to do and. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just a, seriously a different world. And then, uh, you know, just persevering and persevering. And then over the last few years, uh, I don't know really when it started, but maybe 2009, 2010, somewhere around there, the site started getting a little bigger. And then mm -hmm. each year it's been getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. And it, it, it keeps getting big. I mean, like I said, uh, you know, I have a stable of writers, as you know, I'm sure you do as well. And they, I've always instructed them, you know, Sometimes if we're chasing scoops or whatever, or we're covering, you know, the trades, variety, rap, the Hollywood Reporter. But if we want to report on news and, you know, keep our audience happy, you know, we're sourcing you guys because you guys just have it. It's just like we check your site and we go, oh, my God, there, there's that. Where do they find that? I mean, you guys just have a really good system there. So how many guys do you have working over at Collider? Uh, 72. No, I'm joking around. I'm Jeez. joking. I'm I, so I, joking. I, I was about to. I was like, <clears throat> right. Wow. Well, uh, yeah. Are you hiring then? <laughs> right. Uh, not, not even. Uh, no. There's uh, um, Adam, Matt, Perry, and Evan. Uh, mm -hmm. And Brendan. There's like uh, four or five main people. Yeah. And then you know uh, Christina. There's a bunch of people that write and do interviews. It's it's uh, the the truth is one of the reasons the site 
couldn't take off sooner mm -hmm. is that you can only do so much as one person, you know, back in the beginning and people, you just can't write all the stories and stuff and it takes time. Um, yeah. And it's only, and I really, I have to say this, like it's only because of the writers and the staff on the site that the site is what it is. I am just truly a small cog in the wheel. Mm -hmm. Um, we're only as strong as, you know, everyone that works there. Absolutely. And I know, you know, we've been building the Schmoes Know website for about a year and a half now, and we're finally kind of clicking. We got some good writers going now and that, that it does it, it at one point it was just me and, yep. and it was, <laughs> it was like every day you're writing and writing and writing and trying to build this and trying to get out there. And then more writers start coming in and you start to, do you get a lot of submissions by the way? Do you get, is it going yeah. straight to you? Uh, a lot of people email me about writing for the site mm -hmm. and i i really i try to look at some of them i some some days people it really is about timing i don't know if it is for you too absolutely it is about timing sometimes i'll be so busy one day and i'll get a submission and i truly don't even look at it because i don't have the time yeah then another day might be slower and i'll get a submission or two and i'll read it and but generally speaking the submissions i read or the links that i click to mm -hmm. need a lot of work and yeah. it's and it's um, it's it's no fault it's just you have to build up your skill set absolutely you know? yeah it's uh it's you know it's the same deal for me guys and I, it's something i've been wanting to address in schmobile or on our facebook page meet the movie press which you can go to and like and share and and then click on over to the itunes and subscribe that's my little plug, plug there yeah. um you know, Schmoville, I do get your submissions as well, and I love them, and it, it's just like Frosty said. Sometimes you are so insanely busy that it just goes right by you. Then there's something, one of my one of my new writers, uh, Matt Brown, give me a little shout out, Matt Brown. Hope you like it. Um, he wrote this great Friday 13th article and shared it with me because he knew I'm a diehard Friday 13th fan, and I read it and I went, why aren't you writing for us? And now he's writing for us. And it's just, that was timing. That is exactly what you said. It's just yep. timing. So that that's amazing. I'm, I'm so glad to hear that, you know, there, there is light at the end of the tunnel sometimes with a, uh, you know, working so hard when you're so passionate about something, which obviously you love movies. I, I, I truly do love movies. <laughs> and I do too. And that's why we do what we do. Um, we love talking about movies. That's why I love this show because we can, we're, starting the like with these stories we start with oh my god chris pratt is gonna do cowboy ninja what, what is it viking there's cowboy ninja viking which we are going to get to but first guys as you know every wednesday i drop something on the facebook page at meet the movie press it's called the hopeful news break and we're gonna start that right now hopeful news break time there you go frosty how do you like that uh that music it's pretty awesome um <laughs> so what we do every week Hopeful news break is the fans, based on what they hear are hearing out there from Collider, Schmoesno.com, the rap with Jeff Snyder, is things are happening. You know, a lot of the news lately, we talked a little bit about this, and there's a lot of hopeful news breaks wanting here, uh, coming in about Suicide Squad. They want to get final confirmations on some of these names that are going around. So I want to pull one of them up because that's what people do here. They drop in a comment and we discuss it and we say, how likely is it going to break? based on what we're hearing. So, uh, Tushan, thank you so much for uh, commenting. Tushan, I'm not even going to butcher your last name, but thank you for giving me the parentheses on how to pronounce your first name. I want DC to confirm the many rumors surrounding the Suicide uh, Squad casting. Is Margot Robbie as Harley confirmed? Leto as Joker? Courtney as Deadshot? Maybe even reveal the whole cast at once. How likely is it, are we going to get a final confirmation of Suicide Squad Maybe in the next week, maybe in the but before the end of the year. What what are your thoughts on that? Um, I think it comes down to when contracts are being signed. Yep. Uh, and I I think that a lot of people maybe don't realize that with these superhero, well, a lot of people do know that with the superhero movies, uh, you're signing multi picture deals. Yep. That gets complicated. Yep. Because say Marvel makes you sign between four and eight pictures, whatever it is. With DC, I'm sure they're going to follow a similar mandate. Yeah. Where you know we want to sign someone for four pictures or three pictures. That takes that's a negotiation, mm -hmm. and Will Smith uh, is not easy to lock down. No, he's not. He um, he, he won't do Independence Day uh, and, and Independence Day too, guys. I mean, he just <laughs> that's no really bearing on this, but uh, I I would love to see Will Smith in it. But I that always seemed like a weird name for me in regards to Suicide Squad. Yeah, I think that uh, Marvel. I love Marvel. Mm -hmm. 
Marvel is known for not paying great salaries. Right. And I think one of the ways Warner Brothers can counteract what Marvel is doing is actually offering actors their rates yeah. to do superhero films. This is just hypothetical, but it's a very complicated negotiation regarding getting back to what the the question is. I truly don't know. Yeah. I think that, you know, whenever they have contracts locked, they're going to go. Yeah. Um, and it's obviously a go film. I mean, this is a film that's going. Yes. So it's a big studio movie. I don't know when I am getting to the Margot Robbie as uh, Harley Quinn. Uh, I broke that story or we broke that story. Yep, and that's why I brought it up. And uh, I am 100% sure that she is doing that role and playing Harley Quinn. I don't know when they're announcing it, mm -hmm. um, but I am like standing on concrete on that one. Good. Uh, but as you know, and, and we've addressed this like just off camera. Yeah. Uh, things change all the time. Like the fact is someone can be contractually signed and, you know, some family emergency could happen or something. You, you never know. Scheduling issue. I mean, I know it does happen, but, you know, some people will call foul if it's like, oh, scheduling issue. No, it does happen. It it, it can actually, the, the film will change a release date. It will change whatever. Family issues going to sure. push you back. Harrison Ford gets injured and they got to take a break. <laughs> whatever. You know, so I I, I mean, I right now at this moment, Margot Robbie is playing Harley Quinn. Yeah. Th that's for sure. I'm, I'm sure of it. Um, but until they're filming, anything can change. Yeah, absolutely. And Tushan, I hope that answers your question because, you know, this guy knows. And uh, they did a story on it. It was an exclusive. Jeff Snyder has been working on this. He broke Je uh, Jared Leto as Joker. You know, every all the signs of these names that are out there are pointing in that direction. Now, it could happen just like Joaquin Phoenix walking away from Doctor Strange. That was, like, like we talked about off camera, that was like dotted line stuff right it was uh it was like here it is yeah i i was we we did a story on that and uh i we did that there he's in final talks yep and uh, i i was told that he's dr strange like it was one of these things where like just waiting on the announcement mm -hmm. and i even heard this from like sources at mar like i got it from everyone was telling me it wasn't mm -hmm. like one person saying it to me it was he's dr strange yeah so i don't know exactly how it all how it all fell apart right but I was always curious how the F they're going to get him because, you know, he's an amazing actor. He's publicity shy. And yeah. with a Marvel movie, you have to get out there and promote. Yeah. So it was always a weird marriage to me. Um, but it, it was a great choice. I think yes. he would have been a great Sorcerer Supreme. He would have been a great Doctor Strange. But yeah, we talked about that a little bit. Um, you know, Jeff was, uh, he, he broke it uh, almost during uh, Comic-Con, almost like the, maybe the night before Comic-Con that he was you know rumored or or talking about sure. it and then you kind of added more to it that it's like final negotiations and i think you know uh you know jeff and i talked a little bit about it it's like he looks at some of the people he's worked with like maybe scarlett johansson and her and he sees oh she's you know black widow and she's doing it and and still doing these great you know maybe independent movies or, or passion projects as it were but yeah i think he's just i think he He's, for lack of a better word, a strange guy and probably just walked away because he's like, nah, I don't want to go to Comic-Con and, and, you know, stand up and dance like a monkey. That That's my opinion. I, I, I mean, one day it'll come out what exactly happened, but it was sudden. It yes. was like really like everything was going great and all of a sudden like car accident. Yeah. You know, like it was one of those kind of situations. So yeah. eventually we'll, we'll find out. Yeah. Well, since we're on Dr. Strange, I mean, that's another hopeful news break. Everybody, you know, I want to see if I can find it. And guys... By the way, thank you so much. Hopeful News Break is really taking off over there on the Meet the Movie Press Facebook page. I mean, we have uh, 37 comments. I can't even get through all of them. Uh, but so I think I want to thank you for that. But I know a lot of them are coming out there that they they want the final casting announcement for Doctor Strange. And is it Benedict Cumberbatch? Uh, I yeah. I mean, I <laughs> I think people are being more uh, careful about saying things. But the thing about Marvel is they say nothing. Yeah. Until the contract is signed. Yep. You know, like uh, Downey being part of Civil War. It, the the day we found out he was part of Civil War was when he walked out on that stage because that means he signed the contract. Yes. So we're not going to hear anything. But the Benedict thing is the same thing. He obviously, Marvel wants him for five to eight pictures. Yep. And it's a big commitment. And they got to figure that out. And also, do cameos count as appearances? All that stuff has to be negotiated in advance. Right. But he's, listen, he's a great choice and uh, great actor. Yeah. I'm I, sure, you know. I've always stood by that. I, I like him as that. I, I, I've heard a lot of you out there that say it's kind of a safe choice. Who cares? He's going to deliver, guys. And that's what's important. And I think, uh, I, I, think I, I think I speak for a lot of people that if they cast Benedict, 
we're going to get a damn good Doctor Strange. So that's great. The other thing I want to talk about, Frosty, is there is a rumor going around. And I want to find out. I want to give this shout out to uh, who wrote it. And that is, uh, okay, let, I'm going to, Mladen Kulik? I butcher the names. Yeah, I'm just going to butcher. Uh, I'm sorry. M-L-A-D-E-N. How do you pronounce that? Mladen? Mladen? M-L-A-D-E-N. We're spending about 20 minutes on your name, uh, dude. I'm sorry about this. But the rumor is that Star Wars Episode uh, Seven trailer will appear in The Hobbit. No. And yeah, I know it's 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 kind of debunked. I think I read something on your side actually about it. Uh, I think I don't know who. I think Peter did something on Slash Film, but uh, oh, that's right, Peter yeah. did. Yeah. Here, here's the thing. I've been working on the story myself mm-hmm. for a little bit, and I've realized yesterday after working the phones and the emails, I will never have confirmation um, in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. So I'm I'm just never going to be able to break it. And I thought I was. Yeah. But. Uh, I mean, I'll fuck it. Up. Sorry, Stop. I will. Uh, it happened. Break I mean, the I'll, seal. Right, right. There it is. It's now explicit. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, I'll say what I heard, and but I want to preface this by saying that I have no confirmation at all. Okay. Like we all know this. Yes. So I'm not absolutely okay. I heard originally uh, it was coming in December. Mm-hmm. Then someone told me it was going to be on Hunger Games. Then I reached out for yeah. Hunger Games, and then they're like, "No, it's not on Hunger Games." Right. I keep on hearing it's on Into the Woods. Which would make sense. It's a Disney movie. Yeah. I keep on hearing it. I reached out for comment to a number of sources that usually will give me info. The thing I've learned, or if you maybe you're familiar with this as well, there are two properties in town that when you reach out for information and confirmation, they will not respond or answer. Batman, Superman, mm-hmm. Star Wars. Star Wars. Yeah. Those two properties, you can ask... You just won't get information. People yeah. don't even admit they're working on things involving those two franchises. Yeah, no kidding. Um, I keep on hearing Into the Woods... We will probably hear something in the next week or two. Yeah. I'm sure Disney's going to make an announcement, but um, maybe they're still figuring it out because the other thing is the Batman and Superman teaser. Right. You know, that's coming from what I'm hearing next month as well. Nice. Again, I can't confirm. No. I, it's You know, guys, and, and what Frosty's saying when we can't confirm is like, we're hearing things. We have a lot of people that we know that are doing what we do. So, you know, the it's... It, could be classified, I guess, as a rumor Definitely. to start, but it's speculation, which is, you know, that's a, the first and foremost thing I love about uh, these articles that we post on Shmozo.com, and probably, uh, maybe I'm speaking for you on Collider as well. These conversations are, are fun as movie fans. Yeah, the problem I have is that, I was talking to Matt about this or Adam yesterday, it's like, I don't want to, with Collider, mm-hmm. when we post something, it's solid. Yes. And, and we are not known for posting rumors like that right. we're starting. Right. And so, like, for example, I could run a story like I'm hearing Star Wars is on Into the Woods. But then if it's not true, you know, you're damaging your reputation. Yes. And someone on Twitter is going to totally say that I said it's on Into the Woods. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it's I'm not saying that. I'm saying I'm hearing it. Yes. But I have no confirmation. Well, that's the beauty of Meet the Movie Press is because, I mean, you can you can write stories about this. I mean, I know I I. I had heard I heard speculation that Dead, Deadpool was a PG thirteen movie, rumors. I heard it from friends, whatever, uh, in conversations I was having, and people picked up on it as fact. Now, I, I'm here to tell you guys that's that's not entirely true. I don't know. I just was hearing that, so it could change tomorrow. So I know I, if it I actually I've heard both sides of it mm-hmm. that it could be PG thirteen and it could be R. I have and too, I, yeah. and I I think that it's possible the studio is still weighing options absolutely and it's also possible that they're going to shoot it two ways and release a pg-13 in theaters maybe an unrated, unrated version on exactly Blu-ray. and, and that, so we won't know until they know. figure it out yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly exactly so, but you know uh getting back to star wars in the trailer i mean i just kind of love that there was all the speculation that there might be a trailer then there was the john williams is scoring the trailer right then there is now it seems like it's really happening i mean guys we still don't have confirmation about this it could we, we could not get a trailer at all this year uh, i'm pretty sure we're getting a trailer but, uh, this but year. it's all pointing yeah, in that no, direction I'm, I'm, and now what i'm i'm looking back at the trailers for sorry guys i'm bringing up the prequels for phantom menace and even attack of the clones and revenge of the sith but that they made an event out of it. I mean, I remember seeing uh, the Phantom Menace trailer on the news. Yes. That was the very first time I and, saw it. And it's going to happen again with Episode 7. Yes. 100%. That's what I think Disney and and more along the lines of ABC, maybe uh, maybe some cross-promotion with uh, Rebels. 
I think it's going to be an event. I think it will show up in the theaters, absolutely. I don't think it's going to be a Meet Joe Black kind of thing, uh, again, where people are going to walk into a theater and, and then walk out. Actually, maybe it, <laughs> that could happen. Um, I would do that, I guess. I'd, I'd walk out of Into the Woods if it wasn't good. <laughs> uh, you know, they're screening at the Junkets this weekend in New York, mm -hmm. so people are going to know what that movie is yeah. after this weekend. Okay. I'm, F I'm, FYI. I haven't heard anything. Um, I, you know, yeah, I want to see Johnny Depp sing. Sure. Um, I, I, but I do think the Episode 7 trailer is coming this year. Uh, I've heard the rumors uh, from Badass, right? Uh, Devin said just kind of flashes of characters with some uh, some music underscoring it. I've, I've heard a few descriptions of the trailer. Yeah. Um, I don't know what it's going to be. To be honest, I don't know if Devin's right. I don't know who's right. Yeah. Uh, I do know, though, that this is an opportunity for them to do something really cool. Yeah. And I love, unlike a lot of people, I love great teaser trailers. Me too. That are teasers. Yes. That give you nothing. That give you nothing. But like, especially, for, okay, if episode seven trailer pans out the way I'm hearing or you're hearing, whatever, it's going to be so filled with nostalgia. It's it's like, you know, the characters you're going to see, you know, obviously Han Solo, maybe Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, you know, and then the new characters, the force theme on the on the wood pipe. What, what is it? I don't know what that description was, but the wood pipes uh, force theme and then going into maybe the Millennium Falcon swinging around, firing at camera, cut to black, Star Wars titles. That to me is an amazing teaser. Sure. And it would it would make me go crazy because it'd be the actual footage. It would be the actual music and it's legit. And we're not talking about a rumor anymore. So I hope it happens. I think it absolutely will happen. Um, so let's let's just uh cross our fingers but i think guys uh you know what it, it could be it could be that disney theatrically is releasing it on into the woods um sure and is doing an event before that absolutely so it's like that week you can see it on abc at 8 p.m sure or whatever they're going to do for maximum exposure and then see it in theaters this friday on into the woods they're, they're going to try to put it on agents of shield and it's going to leak <laughs> that's funny um i don't think that it's gonna no but anyway, yeah, let's, I know. Let's, you know but i really believe we're gonna see it next month okay yeah i i i, I believe so as well and uh, so guys that was our hopeful news break thank you so much guys every wednesday you don't even have to wait for my prompt drop in your hopeful news break what are you hearing out there go to collider.com go to schmoesno.com go to the rap.com read the news that's out there and just kind of connect the dots it's really fun that way that's what i do i love it that's what we all do so we, we got, oh, and then look at that. We're on iPhone 6. Mark Ellis is in the studio. He's a real jerk. He, he is a jerk. He really is. He still goes to Chili's after I almost died. You jerk. Is he, is he the Chili's guy? He, yo, he loves oh, Chili's. Oh, Lord. Or you want to jump on there and defend your uh, Chili's? Okay, we got, we got a hopeful news break with Mark Ellis here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just I just want to say you need to get a second opinion before you just I mean, look, you you had a bad month, okay? Yeah, yeah. And I don't think you should write off Chili's or the entire corporate restaurant world simply because of one food poisoning wait, wait. incident where you almost corporate, died. Corporate world. Oh. <laughs> Allow me to plug L my little plug there. Is there a Dunkin' Donuts out? That should be breaking news today. Is there Dude, a Dunkin' that, Donuts in LA? Yeah, you, yeah you Santa Monica. This. 12th and Wilshire. I may or may not have seen a movie last night in Santa Monica based solely on its proximity to that location. Wow. And I might have bought extra after the screening to take home so I could be looking at Jeff, who's probably watching, and saying, all of us can have Duncans today, sir. <laughs> yeah. And uh, speaking of Jeff Snyder, JTE, do we have a, a Snyder in the house? Is he there? Jeff, are you there? Oh, you bet your ass I am. <laughs> oh, Mr. Snyder, my illustrious co-host. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm having some Dunkin' Donuts of my own right now, boys. I, I, knew, I knew he was going to try to come at me, and I, I circumvented that. Yes. Yes, I know. You're having Dunkin' Donuts. Where are you right now, Jeff? I am in the living room at my parents' house in Needham, Massachusetts. <laughs> wow. Nice. And, uh, and I'm sorry I can't be there in the studio, Frosty, but I'm sure you're doing a great job. He's, he's holding his own uh, very well. In fact, I think we're going to hire him. And, Jeff, you can just stay in Massachusetts, I guess. Is that uh, – no, no, we're not going to do that. Fair, do fair that. enough. Fair, fair enough, enough, guys. And, uh, Jeff, bang up job. Thank you uh, last week for, for riding the ship while I was uh, in bed. Uh, dealing with chilies, I was I was going to retort to Ellis that my uh, second opinion was the tube that went down my throat to, to check what was going on in my stomach, and the third opinion was the one that went in my rear. So, anyways, uh, that's uh, wow. okay. Another story. Anyways, Jeff. So, 
Uh, I don't know if you were listening. We we did a little hopeful news break. We did some Suicide okay. Squad. Uh, talked about uh, Margot Robbie as uh, Harley Quinn. What what are your th- yeah. you, you're hearing? You broke uh, Jared Leto as uh, I, yeah, Leto, Leto, right? I think it's Leto, but Leto? I could be wrong. I I'm always butchering it. I'm doing a JTE on that name. Um, but uh, thumbs up from the booth. Um, but yeah, so Jeff, what are you hearing? I mean, you want to comment on that? I mean, you know, Frosty's saying it's a done deal with Margot Robbie. That's what I'm hearing too. Uh, yes, you could you could say that she's in. Yeah. Okay, good. Good, good, good. I like that. She's. Uh, I think she's going to be great in that. I think she's going to be, if you look at pictures of her and Harley Quinn, oh, yeah. it is, I mean, she's perfect. She is perfect. Yeah. And- and then the, exactly. No, I, I, I think she's a good actress as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I think, it, uh, you know, I, I've heard like when we reported on uh, Taliban Shuffle, which is a comedy with, uh, with Tina Fey, you know, some people were like, oh, Margot Robbie is not she can't do comedy. And it's like, I beg to differ. Wolf of Wall Street mm-hmm. is funny. Yeah. Like she is amazing in that movie. She's a very talented actress. Um, and I'm sure that we're going to know a lot more about her abilities uh, because she's booked a lot of stuff. And But I, I, I think she's going to be – she's very good. I, I think she's going to kill it as Harley Quinn. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's just the right move. And so, so yeah, so Jeff, you're, you're, you're standing by that as well. I love hearing that. I, I, I really hope we get an announcement uh, you know, soon. Like we're, we're, we were just talking about it. You know, it's really about the contracts. As you know, Mr. Snyder, it's like uh, negotiations take a while. You know, it, it could happen any yes, moment. Exactly. So, um, 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 yeah, I have no idea when you're going to see a timing of an announcement, but uh, yeah, I did see that Jer- that Jared Leto kind of brushed off yesterday to MTV News all the rumors about the Joker. He did. So uh, th- that makes me makes me think something is definitely up there, which is I think pretty cool. Yeah, I I, I got to hand it to you, dude. That that was a great scoop, and and yeah, he he dodged it. He's he's in talks. You know, right? I'm, I I heard. What's really funny is you broke that story on a Friday. Yeah. If I if I'm not mistaken, I yep. I heard his name either the night before or early that morning, but I didn't know what was. I didn't know the role. I didn't know yeah. anything. I just heard he's ta- like Warner Brothers is looking at him for the movie, mm-hmm. but in no way, shape, or form did I know that information. But I did have the information about Margot right about the time that you released the Joker story and I'm like and I'm not running this story nice. because I'm like I will be sitting on this for a few days nice. because everyone's going to be talking about Joker yeah 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 that's it's right. very true and I think that's a I didn't get a chance to t- uh, to, to join you guys last week when we had uh, Mayimbe in from uh, Latina Review uh, but you guys talked a little bit about Joker and, and Leto and I think it's a great choice actually I think it's yeah. a, he'd be a fantastic Joker I know everybody has Heath Ledger in their head and rightly so but um, you know we're in a new uh, DC universe. Yeah, I, yeah go, Jeff. Sorry, sorry. Uh, you know, I mean, listen, they are big shoes to to fill. Absolutely. But someone has to fill them because they cannot just keep the character on the sideline in the midst of this comic book movie golden age. You yeah, know? absolutely. Great way to put it too. I mean, we are in the golden age of of the movie universe uh, comic books. It's not going away anytime soon. It's a now. It's now a genre. It's, oh, it's beyond a genre. It's yeah, yeah. It's it, it's, it's a it's, whole other level. It's here to stay. A lot of people. I mean, this is a this is a topic we can go into massive depth with, but it, it's here to stay. I don't believe that there's going to be superhero fatigue. It really is about the content and the execution. Yeah. If we get good movies, they're they're going to be here forever. And just like Star Wars keeps coming back, you know. And thank God for that. And so, and that was the other thing, Jeff. You know. Uh, I don't know what you're hearing. I know you're you're not like a diehard Star Wars fan like me, but the Episode Seven trailer, not on the Hobbit movie as rumored, but um, maybe coming with uh, a theatrical release of Into the Woods and or a big event, maybe on the news or ABC or something like that. Are you hearing anything, dude? Honestly, I, I don't hear too much about trailer placements and that kind of stuff. I will tell you that Disney would not comment yeah. on the record regarding those Hobbit rumors. Mm-hmm. Um I would be. I mean, I don't know. I, I it made sense to me that the, that the trailer would debut with something like that. But but at the same time, I don't understand why Disney wouldn't debut the trailer in front of one of its own movies. Yeah, yeah. Hence, into the woods. Exactly. Right. So yeah. Well, I'm I'm just excited to get one because uh, I think it's you know the rumor was there that we might, and now it looks mm-hmm. it's we're gonna get one, and I can't <laughs> wait. 
Did you guys already talk about uh, X Men Apocalypse? No, let's talk about it because I I, okay. I I missed uh, covering that actually because of uh, being a little bit sick. <clears throat> but uh, that was another good one, Jeff. So why don't you break it down for us what you heard, um, and it's in regards to the young um, uh, Jean Grey and Scott Summers in uh, Apocalypse. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I heard that Brian Singer was sort of aiming high for young for young Jean Grey, who I think is going to be recurring in future X Men movies. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I'd heard that he was looking at Haley Steinfeld, Elle Fanning, and Chloe Moretz. Yeah. And then for uh, young Scott Summers, that he was more open to casting like a fresh face. Uh, and that was um, EastEnders star Ben Hardy, mm -hmm. Charlie Rowe, who's the lead on Red Band Society, mm -hmm. and um, uh, Timothy Ch uh, Chalamet, who's on Homeland and now plays Matthew McConaughey's son in Interstellar. There you go. Um, I think it's, uh, I mean, I'm not surprised that they're going to bring these characters in as young, uh, you know, recast the characters. I know maybe some people were hoping now that the kind of the series is rebooted and we have, uh, you know, Jean Grey and Cyclops alive again and we saw those cameos at the end of Days of Future Past that maybe they'd come back or but look they successfully recast Professor X Magneto Mystique they, they can do it with Jean Grey and uh, Scott Summers and these these actors sound fantastic for personally I like Chloe Moretz as, as Jean Grey what do you what are your thoughts Frosty um I don't know who I feel it's very weird because are they going to cast someone who looks like Famke, mm -hmm. or are they just going to say, F it, let's just cast the, the best actor for the role and not explain how she goes from here to here? You know, like, because yeah. yeah. there's an element of that, because, like, you know, continuity wise. Sure. Um, but I'm sure that Brian can literally get whoever he wants because the franchise is so popular yeah. and so successful and Fox pays. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, you know, it's. The, 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 he's going to get whoever he wants. Yeah, and the, and the quality is back on track. I mean, I'm sorry that you know after X3 and then Wolverine Origins, it was like it was. If you're an X Men fan, obviously you were you were hating life with with those movies. And then First Class comes along, Days of Future Past. We we are back on track. So that was a great scoop, Jeff. Do you do you know? I mean, I, has anything progressed? Are you hearing one name over the other or anything like that? Um, no, not at this time. Um, I mean, to be honest, I, I would never imagine that, that X-Men is the sort of movie that Elle Fanning would even do. Mm. Um, so I don't even know how interested she is in it. Okay. Um, I mean, I know Chloe has her own franchise with the fifth wave and, uh, I mean, to me, Haley seems like the best fit out of those three. Of course, there are other girls who I'm sure are in the mix. Those are just the three names that were circulating last week. Um, yeah. I've heard some pretty interesting apocalypse rumors. I'll, I'll say that much. Okay. <laughs> Are you going to tease yeah. us? That's it? They, you, you don't want to drop anything more? What? Tom, Tom Hardy or anything? Or uh, Didn't we talk about the, the, that? Tom Hardy is not, is not one of the names. Um, okay. I'll put it this way. One, one of the names um, that I have heard, ha, it, 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 he said the word apocalypse. We heard him saying the word apocalypse a lot last year. Okay. That's all you're giving us. Think, uh, th now, think hard on that one. Think hard. Frosty, no anything? <laughs> None. All right, Jeff, I'm going to get back to you. Uh, I'll, I'm going to think hard. That's fine. Let, 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 Sh let Schmoville collectively put its brain together okay. and think about who they heard saying the word apocalypse a lot last year. All right, guys. So it's now to you, Schmoville. Who did you hear talking apocalypse? The word apocalypse a lot last year. I'm going to do my research. Jeff, how long okay. do we have you? Do you, uh, do you want to stay for a little longer, or do you have to go and... Uh... No, 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 I'm good. I'll let you guys get back to it and, and ponder that little uh, riddle who's, <laughs> who's one of three people who I hear is up for the role of apoc uh, Apocalypse. Okay. But um, you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank and I you. I will be back on for the uh, you know the first show in December. Nice. Uh, you have a great one, too, dude, and uh, thanks for calling in. Enjoy your family time. All right. Later, Frosty. Later, Mark. Let's see you, dude. All right, that was uh, Jeff Snyder from The Wrap, my co-host, uh, getting ready to eat some turkey with the family in Massachusetts, and I'm sure waiting for the uh, New England-Detroit uh, game coming up this weekend. Wow. I'm waiting hey, for that game, too. Hey, Ellis, how'd you, how'd you like that? I dropped in a sports reference. 
<laughs> it was very impressive. What I also like is that Jeff called in, and he better not rail against corporate restaurants because he tweeted about having Doritos Los Tacos for the first time. I saw that. That yes. was also, uh, I should mention that Jeff is part of the sponsored content campaign from Doritos. <laughs> so he is getting paid for that. Yeah, he was. Yeah. So. You know, what's funny is that you guys were talking about the Star Wars trailer earlier, though, and yeah. what people will do to make an effort to go see it in the actual theater. And I was on your train, Riley, in 2005. I took a date, actually late 2004, I took a date uh -huh. to go see The Incredibles at midnight yes. on Thursday. She thought I was taking her because I'm a romantic guy and she wanted to see The Incredibles. Right. But they had the first trailer for Revenge of the Sith. There you go. And man, it was awesome. I understand. Why do you think I went to Monsters, Inc. like so early <laughs> to see right. Attack of the Clones trailer? Which, you know, and then the movies will, came I will, out. I will tell you that the first teaser, I, I will always remember this, the first teaser for episode one. Mm-hmm made it look like the greatest movie in history. Can we talk about that for a second? Just, it was so, yeah. with, the, with the fog and the, the fog Gungans. And then the, yeah, and, and I, you didn't I, know the Gungans sucked yet. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, it was, like, whoever cut that trailer, it was a work of genius. It really was. It got you so excited. You went, oh my God, Star Wars is back. Yeah, the way that it built up, the way that every journey is a first step, all that stuff, then you hear Darth Vader's breath. It's yes. maybe the greatest 20 seconds in trailer history. Absolutely. And then seeing Darth Maul when the other side of the lightsaber came out, and you're like, oh my God, we got a new weapon. Yeah. Right. I, 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 yeah, I remember the beats on that because I think I watched it probably 57 times in, you know, in, 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 however long it was. And each beat, like what you were talking about, Frosty, with like the fog and the Gungans, yeah. and it's like the Force theme rising. And then it just explodes with the fanfare. You got the pod racing scene. Then you're jumping around to the N Naboo fighters, you know, and in the, in the big droids uh, uh, battle in the, in the skies. And then... Darth Maul, and then I always remember Obi Wan fighting Darth Maul, um, and that move he makes. Like it was just like beep beep beep. I was like geeking the hell out that I think that trailer actually made me believe after I saw the movie that it was a good movie. <laughs> yeah, I I still remember, and we shouldn't spend too much time on this, but no, I'm, no. I'm sure you guys will remember this. I remember seeing Episode One, and not and 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 sort of stunned afterwards, like and. You believed it was a good movie oh, that I you know. that you couldn't understand. Like you, you know what I mean. Like you were like, it's 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 good, <laughs> but I don't know how. I don't understand why something's not connecting. So you kept seeing it to try to figure out why it's good. Like yeah. it was, well, at least I did. I, I, no, I did. I, it, it makes me think of, I got into the biggest argument with my roommate and best friend at the time, Jeff McClure. I'm giving you a shout out, dude, because he just called it right away. He's like, that movie was shit. And I went, <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. <laughs> And he's like, oh, yeah? And and we would just go back and forth, back and forth. And we were in a room of people that just saw it opening night. And they were all just sitting around us looking at us argue. And I was defending this thing. Yeah. Just like I was defending a bag of shit. You know guys. what I was doing? Like it, for the longest time, for years afterwards, it was kind of like when Big Tobacco gets sued. And they just they, 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 they litigate the hell out of everything. And they keep filing continuances. And they just keep putting off the actual trial. In my head, I just kept putting off whether or not I actually thought it was a good movie for years years yeah and then after revenge of the sith i was like i just sat down and i was like you know what we're gonna have to have this conversation with yourself mark <laughs> there's a redeeming quality to each one of those movies sure there's something fun to watch there's, there's Darth good mall there's yoda with the lightsaber and attack of the clones yeah there's the volcano battle yeah. at the end of revenge of the sith but they're yeah. not good movies. no no with phantom menace it just yeah you had to take a good long look in the mirror and <laughs> and just realize that they missed the mark on that one but that you know, that's the Star Wars stuff. You know, I, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna, Go. I'm, let's let's get off Star Wars because we can make a whole show about this. Absolutely, I will say that the people I've spoken to who may or may not be involved in Star Wars right now, all just uniformly say this new movie is really good. Yeah, like that's all I keep hearing, and this is not like the BS talk. It's no. just everyone keeps saying it's really good. Yeah, and guys, listen, after the prequels. You know, it, it, the, bar, the bar, I wouldn't say the bar. Well, the bar is high. It's always high with Star Wars. However, you know, anything's going to be better than the prequels. But I am so happy to hear that. Yeah, that no, you're hearing that. And it's I, uniform, though. Yeah. Like, not one dissension voice being like, ooh, you should be nervous. Like, no. Yeah. Like, they have the script. They have it. Like, they have it. Yeah, good. And then, so, I want to kind of veer this into the Collider and, and some stories. You know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll say this about Star Wars. How often do you post any rumors on Collider? 
about Star Wars. Not as often as we probably should if we wanted to get uh, hit whoring. Thank you. you know, Thank like, you. Uh, uh, same here. Um, we reported on the trailer. We reported on the title. That's about it. We, we, you know something? We post when there's real news. Yes. Like Devin's description of the trailer, that's a real story. Absolutely. You know, and, like, and, and Devin's very, uh, he's, he's right on the money sometimes. Oh, and, 100%. You know. um, and it's also possible that they've cut a few trailers uh -huh. and that someone he knows saw one of the versions and maybe that's one of the five. Like, who knows? Like, yeah. I'm sure, listen, you don't just cut one thing. Right. You cut a few. Yeah. Um, but anyway, the, the point is that you can have that argument again and again about where's the line mm -hmm. about, you know, how much do you want to post for rumors and whatever. But ultimately, I think there's an element of hit whoring that goes on. Mm -hmm. And I think that I don't want Collider to just be posting rumor after rumor. I want it to be where we're posting things like and maybe you feel the same way. Like I do. Ultimately, we're the gatekeeper to news. Yes. And you have to ultimately decide what is appropriate for posting. Yeah. I have a very strong feeling about being anti-spoilers. I do not want to post stories that ruin movies. Like when certain things leak for certain films, I don't want to post it. Yeah. Granted, we posted some Star Wars stuff that definitely is spoiler, but it, it's one of those gray areas. Yeah, it really is. But... I don't want to ruin movies. Thank and you. And that's not what I'm about. I love movies. I don't want to ruin them. And we, I, there's a mandate that comes from me, you know, no major spoilers. At that I have that same mandate, uh, especially, I mean, yes, we do post spoilers sometimes. Um, but when it comes to Star Wars or some of these other big movies, especially Star Wars for me, when these rumors are coming out, these like this flood of speculation that could be like major spoilers. Yeah. I'm looking at you making starwars.com, whatever the hell your name is. And that ridiculous rumor I read that oh, I've, could, I've, it, it could have maybe spoiled the entire movie for me. Yeah. I hate you for that. Right, I, I've actually avoided uh, reading these things. Me too. Uh, the biggest problem is that it's like, there's so much traffic Mm -hmm. And money to be made on this on Star Wars yeah. that people are going after it in a way that no other movie is go being gone after. Not even Batman Superman. I know. Nothing. Yeah. And it's it's really it's a shame because mm -hmm. I, as a fan, I want to make it into the theater that day and not know all the twists and turns. Yeah. And it's really hard. Yeah. And I and I I'm I'm totally with you as a Star Wars lover and and we are the gatekeepers and guys out there in uh, you know fans of Collider.com fans of SchmoesNo.com we ca we actually care about your movie going experience we don't want to ruin it for you it's your prerogative if you want to click it you know and sure that we make our money sometimes on on clicks but it's good to know that you feel the same way I do yeah. so so that's feel, all we'll say I feel about very strongly on this one yeah I do too so but I want to kind of shift gears a little bit Collider you uh, you guys broke a really great scoop. I, I, I love this, and it got confirmation from Pratt, and it's going to kind of color a, a conversation we have about the trades out there, but you guys broke Cowboy Ninja Viking with Chris Pratt, yes. and this great uh, comic book uh, series about a guy that has, a, what is it, a multiple personality disorder? Exactly. And he, they hire him as a, an assassin, and uh, right? Assassin? or. I'm, I'm um, I don't Dad, give me I, a little background on this. I actually don't want to say the log line out loud because okay. it is I'm going to butcher it. Okay. But the most important thing is that Chris Pratt would pay, play someone with multiple personality disorder. The three personalities: cowboy, ninja, Viking. Mm -hmm. The genius part about this is that he can be the guy. Yeah. And then when people are looking at him, they see Chris Pratt. Yes. But in actuality, Chris thinks of himself three other actors could play the cowboy ninja and viking i and love that and what's genius about this is as you know and no one reports this yeah 70 percent of box office is international yes no everyone r loves to write these articles where it's like you know the movie made five dollars in america it's a huge bomb no one mentions it made 300 million worldwide yeah yeah so the genius part about this casting is you can hire a big Asian star for the ninja. Thank you. A big star for the Viking, mm -hmm. big star for the cowboy, mm -hmm. having international appeal. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden this movie is a worldwide movie yep. rather than just the Chris Pratt movie. Yes. And uh, But listen, it's really e early going. Even Chris admits, and we reported this, there's no director. Right. And he he backed that up. Yeah. Like, They're uh, looking for a director. He even said, "What? who do you want? Right. Like, I love that he got involved like that. Sorry. Uh, no, I was going to say that the, the genius thing about this is he's been offered a lot of projects oh yeah like a lot after and gardens of the galaxy yeah totally and what's great about this is that it just shows 
that he's going to do what he wants to do because this is a project that had like literally no momentum. This was like a DOA project. It's been in the works for years. You know, it was dropped at a studio. Anyway, Chris is like, I want to do this. And so he's attaching himself to it. And now they're going to go after a director with the star's involvement, which is like... It doesn't usually work this way. Yeah, usually it doesn't. It, it, it's not. And it's it's refreshing. It's great. I'm a huge fan of Chris. And I think he'll be great in this role. It's a cool project. It, this it, this sounds, to me, it, it kind of, I, I know this is going to maybe sound a little weird. It kind of sounds like a Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, I know diff- different genre, but a comic book, sure. But it's not your usual comic book kind of movie. Like Guardians of the Galaxy for me was like, huh? Like, I know it's there. I know it's a Marvel property. How are you going to do this? Oh, you did it brilliantly. How are you going to do Cowboy Ninja Viking on paper for me? It sounds awesome. It sounds like a risk. It sounds like something that is just different and fun and a good action comedy movie. And Pratt is perfect. So how did you guys get wind of this? You don't have to mention sources, of course, but... Sources? <laughs> well, I mean by name, you know, but yeah, uh, okay. So y- y- sources, you know, like uh, I know I've been doing this a while. I know yeah. a lot of people, and you know, I was having a conversation and learned, and you yeah. know, all of a sudden I reached out and I heard about this, and I'm like, okay, it's time Let's to run it. it. Yeah, it's time. It's time to run this story. And I will admit, it doesn't usually get confirmed by the star within like 24 hours or 48 hours. No, that's that's yeah, that's kind of different. But yeah, Pratt, I, Pratt, that's why Pratt's cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's great, but uh. Um, I really getting back to what you were saying about the movie. It's great to see everyone online excited about the property. Yeah, I really do think it comes down to the director because the director is going to be so key to the tone and the look of this movie. Yeah, but there's a lot of possibility on this. Like, I'm, I'm personally very excited for it. I, I am too. Do you? Is there a writer on it? Yeah, the guys who wrote Zombieland wrote an earlier draft. Perfect. And uh, then I guess there was a redraft done by Craig. The guy who did Hangover 2 and a few other things. Oh, um, uh, oh man. I should uh, know this. I want to say Mazan, but... I'm yeah, put- Craig... Uh, I'm, I'm butchering the name. But the yeah, yeah. point is that it's not going to matter who wrote what draft until the director signs on because yeah. the director and Chris are obviously going to work on the script. They could go back to the original script. Like, Chris has a lot of juice, and if they get a big director, that person will have a lot of juice, and then they can do whatever they want. Yeah. So whatever has been written doesn't mean anything at this point. Right, right. Yeah, this th- this is a great project. I I am so excited, and um, it's something we talked a little bit about, and I want to touch on here. Variety reported it. No, Deadline <clears throat> first went with it. Oh, sorry, Deadline, and then Variety, and uh, no mention of Collider in there, huh? Yeah, that happens a lot. It does happen a lot, and we did talk a little bit about it. You know, it's happened to Schmoes no all the time. Um, and then uh, d- d- now I'll call my buddy Justin Kroll from Variety. He gave us some credit uh, on a on a. Taliban shuffle, which was great. Um, and But it happens in this business, and it's something I wanted to touch on. I really like – did you want to talk about this uh, the, the movement that you were you were going for at one point? Sure. Because uh, I like it a uh, lot. <clears throat> I, I wish Jeff was here to comment on it, but we'll, we'll get his opinion on Twitter, I'm sure. Oh, okay, here we go. A number of years ago, mm-hmm. I emailed all the webmasters that run sites and said – because I was breaking some scoops and we were getting no credit and other sites were breaking scoops and getting no credit. And I said, ultimately, the only way that they're going to change their ways, the trades, Variety and The Hollywood Reporter, Deadline wasn't really a player when I was doing this. Right. Um, I said, what we need to do is we will mention them in the story when they break something, but not link them. There you go. And so if you have all these leading publications or online sites mentioning, but not linking, all of a sudden, all that traffic that we're funneling to them is going to go away. Yeah. And then they're going to look at their bottom line. Some big boss is going to say, what happened to our traffic? Yeah. You know, and because I know what I know traffic and there's a lot of traffic when you break a story. Absolutely. And so uh, I figured that was a great way to say, hey, we're serious about this. You need to start linking us when we break a story. Yeah. And as they start crediting, we go back to linking. Yeah. A few people were on board. Um but a number of people weren't, mm-hmm. and they were like, well, we don't want to play that way, and blah, blah, blah. But I really tried hard, and I instituted that policy on Collider, and eventually we went back, um, and then Deadline happened, and they are literally the worst. Like, they are <laughs> yeah. just the worst, and I instituted a policy. I mean, I was just livid, yeah. and I made it so we didn't link them. Then Nikki left. And my writers were like, because I had issues with her, and my writers were like, uh, we should go back to linking them. I said, okay. And then Mike Fleming, you know, 
uh, decided to F me yesterday on this story. Yeah. And uh, which really bothered me. And the reason it bothers me so much is that Collider and you guys and a lot of the online sites, we have to really work for our stories. Yeah, this is a we, great point. We do not get agents calling us on the phone saying, hey, here's a scoop. Can you run it at six o'clock? Yeah. Like, we don't get anything handed to us. So when we break something, it is work and it's not often, right? No, exactly. Like, I'm not breaking a story every week. Right. Like, I'm just not. Like, yeah. but so the point is that I want to be treated with respect. And the fact is, when we break something, because we link to Deadline and the Hollywood Reporter, the Rap and Variety, all those guys, like Collider is known for linking and giving via credit. And because we treat everyone with such respect, I demand to be treated with the same respect. I'm and, with you, dude. And it irritates the F out of me when Deadline, which we link to like five times a day, yeah. like so un like so much yeah. that when we finally break something that is like a big story and you have the audacity to not mention where this story came from, the fact that anyone is talking about this is because of us. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> like seriously, I fuck love it. you. And I will not hold back. Like it bothers me. Good. It just... It, it makes me so angry and it's like a lot of people are afraid to get like online and on Twitter and like voice their opinion. I'm not yeah. like, I want to be treated with respect because I treat you with respect. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's absolutely a policy that we have at Schmoes know as well. I always tell my writers source it, find the original source, link it. It's very important. You know why? Because I have respect for these people, but when it turns around and what you're saying, I'm with you. And you know, it's, it's such a, hard game to play sometimes and you push and shove and you try to get and Schmoville, you are so great sometimes we will break a story and then variety or deadline or hollywood reporter will cover it and if they don't mention us Schmoville just claws out and they start tweeting these and we've actually had deadline and variety a couple times go oops sorry here yeah it, it, it was schmoes no and that's because of the fans but i'm with you dude and i i think it's it's only nice it's it's respectful to do that I mean, we're doing it for you guys. We're not, we're not, I know there are the, the hit whores out there. I know that there are people that create websites in their basement or whatever, but you have to just acknowledge that there are sites out there. Collider, I like to say schmoesno.com. Some of my favorites out there, Screen Rant, Slash Film. These guys work hard and they respect you. Give us respect. That's what we're asking right yeah. now. The, by the way, the reason I was so irate last night, Matt sent me a link that Variety picked up the story yeah. and didn't mention Collider, but the ultimate F you, the ultimate, the thing that made me just like, just in disbelief, like shock was the last line of their story. Uh, it said the Chris Pratt story was originally reported by deadline. Yeah. So to, for them to get like, so it's, it's, it, it, it's listen, the, the thing that people might not realize deadline and variety are owned by Penske. Yeah. And so there it's like a co-owned thing. And obviously they're not going to link out. They're yeah. just going to link to each other, but they didn't even link deadline. But the point is, like, I have an elephant memory, and you <laughs> fucked me over again and again, and we're explicit now, so whatever. Yep, we are. Like, uh, but I'm, I get so irate. But like, uh, Boris at Hollywood Reporter mentioned Collider. I appreciate that. That's and great. again, it's I'm not asking for anything crazy. It's journalism. Yeah. We broke the story when ESPN, when Fox Sports breaks something, ESPN credits Fox Sports. Yeah, it's just. A two-way street. Absolutely. It's just it's just respect, guys. I mean, we're doing the same work and different kind of mediums. I know you guys, but look, we talked about it kind of off air and, and Penske owns these things. It's a mandate from the top. Yes. So sometimes you gotta you gotta hit that. And uh I understand. We're getting the wrap up, Frosty, and uh so man, I, this has been awesome. I was gonna say I'm like I vented hard at the end. I love it. You gotta go you gotta go out hard. Yeah. And that's what we did. <laughs> we 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 made you guys out there watching Meet the Movie Press want more from Frosty. Frosty, where can the good people find you? I know at collider.com. Guys, go with go to collider.com. It's a great site. You guys do excellent work there. But where can they find you, my friend? Uh, I'm on Collider at least once in a while. Okay. Um, <laughs> at uh, least on, once in a while, good. Yeah, I'm on Twitter as Collider Frosty and I uh, you'll find if you if you follow me on Twitter, you're going to discover three things. One, I'm not afraid to voice my opinion. Good. Two, you'll get some interesting movie links. Mm -hmm. And three, you'll get some cat pictures. There you <laughs> because I do have a few cats, and I'm not afraid to Instagram them. There you go. Yeah. You know, it, when you follow me uh, at Riley Around, you will get a lot of dog pictures as well, and perhaps some chili rants. Um, <laughs> guys, thank you so much. This is Meet the Movie Press. Every Friday, we are here with these guys, these great guys, Frosty from Collider, my co-host Jeff Snyder. Find Jeff 
at The Insider and at therap.com. And guys, please go to iTunes and subscribe, rate, comment, share with your friends, share with your family. You'll find us every Friday. I mean, we're just killing it on Meet the Movie Press, and I love having you guys tune in. And thank you again for your well wishes when I missed last week. I really appreciate it. Uh, This is Meet the Movie Press. We're going to take a break next week for Thanksgiving, but we'll be back the following. And uh, guys, just uh, thank you. Share, rate, comment. Are we getting that? I, I just keep talking, JT. Are we having a yeah oh okay uh so again (laughs) thanks frosty for coming in guys meet the movie press we'll see you next time from producers maria menounos kevin undergaro phil svitek christian harloff and the entire popcorn talk network we would like to thank you for tuning in for questions or comments be sure to visit popcorntalk.com i'm sir richard wentworth and this has been a presentation of the popcorn talk network Views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of its owners or principals.